The image you see is a previously scanned 3F file. We will begin by selecting the magnifier window icon. You are presented with the new window known as the detail window. This detail window provides you with a zoomed in, high resolution preview similar to the previews found in the old unsharp mask window. The preview window has been dramatically improved. For example, you can enlarge and resize the window by selecting the green window button or by dragging the corner of the window. To fill the window with a zoomed in view, move your cursor inside the detail window and select anywhere inside this window. Now move your cursor over the preview image and select an area you wish to view at a magnified level. FlexScaler will process the file and show a high resolution preview. I can also open additional windows by selecting the plus symbol I can open up to four windows. You can also select zoom values of 100, 200, and 400 percent. The old magnifier function is still available under a different icon found next to the lock icon. But wait, there's more. Wouldn't it be nice if you could compare different amounts of unsharp mask in each of the four windows? Well now we can. Let me show you how this is done. First select the unsharp mask icon. We are presented with a new window called texture. These unsharp mask values are being applied to each detail window. From the first detail window on the left, select the lock icon. This will lock in all the unsharp mask values along with any other tonal corrections you have made up to this point. Now open a second detail window and choose the same area of the image as the first window. From the unsharp mask window, I will make a change to the settings. Notice how the second detail window reflects the new unsharp mask value. This process can be repeated for the third and fourth detail windows. With multiple windows, I can quickly and accurately select the correct amount of sharpening to apply to this image. Here are some tips when using the detail window. You must first unlock the window to make a new selection. To change your view, you need to first select inside the window and pick in the preview. To reduce this back and forth motion, you can use the tab key to activate the window and select a new image area. Select tab, select tab, select tab. This is a pretty handy feature. To begin, select the texture icon from the main window. The Unsharp Mask filter looks at every pixel in the image and compares each pixel with its neighbors. Based on your settings, it increases the contrast between those pixels, thereby increasing apparent sharpness. FlexColor uses a luminance-based sharpening technique, which applies sharpening only to the luminance information of your image. This is a preferred method of applying sharpening versus applying sharpening to the color information. Let's look at the controls within the Unsharp Mask tool. First up is Amount. This works on a scale from 0 to 999. Think of Amount as the volume control on your radio. The more you increase the amount, the greater the sharpening effect. So how much sharpening should you apply? Well that depends. Since sharpening is applied to every pixel, the amount applied is resolution and output device dependent. For example, if you were to print the same image at different sizes on the same output device, you would apply different amounts of sharpening to achieve the same visual appearance of sharpness. Just as scanning the same image at 10 megabytes and 100 megabytes would require different amounts of sharpening to achieve that same level of sharpness, because one file has many more pixels than the other. The subject matter of the image will also affect how much sharpening will look good. Portraits and low contrast images require different settings than images with fine detail or high contrast. Your taste and style will also dictate the correct amount of sharpening to apply. Dark Limit sets the level below which no sharpening is applied. 
This is done on a scale from 0 to 255. With the value of 10, for example, the first 10 steps of your shadow detail, no sharpening is applied. Sharpening in the shadows can sometimes create unwanted noise or textures in your image. This tool prevents sharpening from being applied to the shadow information, which I find to be very useful. Grain limit prevents you from sharpening low contrast areas of your image, such as film grain, noise, or textures. It works on a scale from 0 to 255. Grain limit works by comparing the value of each pixel with the surrounding pixels. If the difference is less than the grain limit setting, then no sharpening is applied. A good example of a low contrast area would be a clear blue sky. The sky will have pixels of very similar values and typically would not benefit from being sharpened. Grain limit allows you to fine tune which pixels in your image will be sharpened. The radius setting controls the width of the sharpening effect. The setting you choose will depend very much on the subject matter and the size of your output. The apply box is used to preview the image with and without sharpening. Prior to applying unsharp mask in flex color, it is very important to select the final output size and output resolution of your image. For this example, I will use a previously scanned 3F file. With my final output resolution and PPI set, I will open up a detail window and make a selection in the preview. Sharpening is applied to the image and shown in the detail window. FlexColor gives you an accurate preview of your unsharp mask settings based on your final output size and resolution. Viewing your sharpened image at final size is critical for making accurate sharpening decisions. Let me show you how to use the detail windows in conjunction with the unsharp mask tool. Use one window to preview important features that benefit from additional sharpening. For example, some area of high detail. Use a second window to preview an area that may not benefit from too much sharpening. So let's do that. I'll open up a second window. Pick up here. For example, low contrast areas like clear skies or skin will not benefit if too much sharpening is applied. Then compare the two previews with different amounts of unsharp mask. By using this method, you can balance the proper amount of sharpening in your image. A common question regarding sharpening is, should I apply sharpening in flex color or in Photoshop? Well, that depends. For example, if you know the final print size and output device, and you will not be repurposing the image, then apply sharpening in flex color. It's faster and has an additional control over Photoshop. If you plan to use an image at different sizes or output devices, you may elect not to apply any sharpening, or you may apply a small amount of sharpening in flex color to compensate for the analog to digital conversion. Then apply a second round of sharpening in Photoshop targeted to the size and output device. Every image normally requires some amount of sharpening because you are capturing the continuous tones of the film and converting them into square pixels. This lesson uncovers my favorite new feature, Flex Touch. No matter how careful you are with your originals, some amount of dust or scratches will be present on your film and captured when scanning. With the release of FlexColor 3.5, we've added a new feature called FlexTouch. This is a marvelous feature that significantly reduces the time spent removing small particles of dust and scratches from your originals. Let me show you how this tool works. First, open the texture window. When viewing an image at full view, there may be some large dust particles that are visible at this zoom level. I know from experience there may be many more smaller dust particles that are only visible when zoomed in at 100%. So let's zoom in to 100% and see what we find. Here we see a number of small dust particles that have been sharply captured. There may be hundreds of these small dust particles lurking around in your scanned images. To view the effects of Flex Touch, I need to open the detail window. By simply selecting the Flex Touch Apply box, I can quickly and accurately, without blurring the entire image, remove the small bits of dust and scratches, not only in this small detail window, but the entire image. 
Notice delicate detail has not been removed, only the dust. To fine tune flex touch, I can open up the level command and adjust the sensitivity. I have found that values between 50 and 60 works well on most images. This tool works on a scale between 0 and 100. FlexTouch eliminates the time-consuming process of scrolling around your image at 100%, looking for small specks of dust, and using your editing tools to remove them. With the 3F file, you also have the ability to save the dust and scratch information as a separate layer in Photoshop and remove the dust and scratch information selectively. FlexTouch does not dramatically impede your scan time. It is designed to remove small artifacts visible at 100%. For larger artifacts, I recommend the editing tools found within Photoshop and artistically remove them.